Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Wave at me if you can hear me. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you in church this morning. What a blessing that we get together together today. Thank you for joining us in person and braving negative 31 degrees. That's not a lot of degrees or like way many negatives. So thanks for joining us in person. Thank you for joining us online. Uh, I'm excited because today is Communion Sunday. So show me your little cup if you've got your cup. If you don't have your cup, now's the perfect time to run in back real quick and get a communion cup. So that way when we do it, you're ready. So thanks for joining us this morning. I'm just going to pray over service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. God, we praise you that because we have the blood of Jesus over us, because we know Jesus, there is no condemnation. There is no fear. There is no worry or doubt. But we have joy and we have peace, knowing that we have the righteousness of Christ living inside of us. So God, this morning, as we just come before you, we want to praise your name. We want to bless your name. We just want to shout unto you with a voice of triumph and victory. And just bless your name today. So we just praise you for all that today in Jesus' name. Amen. So won't you stand and worship with us this morning? Well, I search the world. But it couldn't fill me.
Isn't he so good? Would you just lift up a hand clap of praise to him this morning? He's worthy of our best.
about it. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Yes, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, praise and worship team. If you have not received communion yet this morning, if you are watching at home, uh, go ahead and prepare communion for yourself. Gather some crackers, some juice, do whatever you desire to do to the very best of your ability at home. But if you do not have your communion with you, would you just simply put your hand up in house and somebody will bring it to you? Praise the Lord. Thank you, praise and worship team. You guys can take that with you.
Praise God. For those watching online, I apologize. But I want to remind you that on Friday, the 19th of February, that's this coming Friday, we're starting a uh, membership and a baptism class. And neither one of those, if you take that class, you're required to be baptized or become a member. Uh, We just want you to be ready for the next step. Some that's been attending for a period of time has never stepped into that next level of becoming a member. So I encourage you to do so. You can sign up at the information desk. On the 28th of February, the last Sunday of this month, we'll be having a greeters and ushers training class. And this is for anyone that is already serving. Those that are already serving, I'm asking that you will be there. And it's also for anyone that is interested in serving. There's going to be a lunch provided. Everybody say, hooray. And uh, we'll just come together and do what God's called us to do. And if you've noticed, we don't have any more paper bulletins so if you want to stay in tune you can come always come and see what's on the screen before services start or you can sign up and get our weekly emails Uh, they're sent out every monday and uh, if you've never been in our email list uh, contact billy joe or contact our office and she will get you uh, signed up for our weekly emails praise the lord In the times of our lives, have you ever felt yourself coming and going at the same time? Am I the only one that ever feels like you can wave at yourself as you're going another direction? That's the title of this message this morning. Is going and coming. So as it comes on the screen, it's found in Nehemiah, chapter 2, starting with verse 2. Therefore the king said to me, why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So... I became dreadfully afraid, verse 3. And said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies in waste and its gates are burned with fire? Next verse. Then the king said to me, What do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said to the king, If it please the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tomb, that I may rebuild it. And verse 6. Then the king said to me, The queen also sitting beside him. Look at the questions. How long will your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me. And I set him a time. I also want to ask you the question. How long is your journey? And when are you going to return? In this grand scheme of things, we see that through the world and how the world is creating this atmosphere of chaos and it's creating a culture of fear and disbelief and displeasure, we find that they're busy coming and going really with no destination 
in mind and no expectation of coming back to where we started. Since the beginning of the year, we've been talking about getting back to our roots, getting back to who we are as believers. And then last week, Pastor Luke preached about taking the land and moving into the promises of God. Here we find in the book of Nehemiah, and the book of Nehemiah, if you've never studied, it's a great source of leadership and motivation, and it shows great commitment. Nehemiah was a, a man that had great joy of the Lord and had a great discernment in the need of, of those around him and the need of what needs to happen in the lives of so many. But the king asked him, how long will your journey be and when will you return? I believe God is speaking to us today, asking that very question. How long and when will you return? There's some lessons that we can learn from this. And these lessons have been placed over my own heart and my own mind and and it's lessons that if we don't understand, we'll continue to do the things that always bring us failure and fault. Anybody been there? That you find as you're going through something and you're looking, certain things that you have learned is that you want to point back at yourself and say, I failed, I have found fault within my life. But I want to encourage you this morning as, as we just bring forth some thoughts. There's more things in life that you are not meant to conquer. You just simply need to survive. Now I know what it says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. That we're more than conquerors. That we're more than conquerors as it comes on the screen in front of you. I want you to read that passage of scripture with me. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Through God and his provision in our lives we are more than conquerors because of his love that we have for us but there's some days in our lives church i need to remind you there are some days we're not going to conquer we're just going to simply survive because of the process within our lives survival puts us through the test of god hear that for a moment Survival puts us through the refining fires of God. It puts us at a place that once we get past it, we look back and we say, only through God's grace and his mercy did I survive. Not always are we going to find that we just simply blow through our problems. There are some days we need to learn to endure our problems and remind ourselves God is in control. See, Moses survived the desert for 40 years before leading out Israel out of the Egypt. He slain an Egyptian soldier, and he went to the backside and tended the flock of what would soon be his father-in-law, and he spent 40 years in the desert. God spoke to him through a burning bush, and he came back, and he started the process of delivering the children of Israel. As Pastor Luke preached last week, what it was for 40 years of another generation to walk and spin their heels in the same area for 40 years. There's a time in our lives that we wish, we hope, and we desire that the things that we endure would just be passed away, wiped away. 
that isn't always what God's intentions are. God's intentions is for us to start to realize who he is. And we rely upon who he is. And we start accepting the things that is happening in our lives, not as punishment, but in the correction of what God is doing in our lives. There was a statement that was said many, many months ago, many years, that being pruned and being corrected or being punished all feel the same. But God is trying to create within us the understanding that we will follow him. See, what happens is we tend to want to reject the deserts those things that we must go through, and we consider them the work of the enemy. But however, we must consider that the Heavenly Father leads us, His children, into these times of refining for the result of a greater story, a greater you. On Wednesday night, I asked those that was in attendance, those that was watching online, to take pen to paper and write down the victories as a memorial in what God's already brought you through. And if we look back through our lives, some of the hardest things we ever endured was hard. They were difficult. Matter of fact, they felt like it was going to crush us. But the end result is this. Through it all, we became better. Through it all, we got stronger. I look around and and one individual sitting in the back talks about his testimony and all the things it did and the time he spent within the bars of a prison. But when he was released, God had already proved himself on the inside. And he started proving who God was on the inside of him. Think about that. Every addict in here, every individual that's going through this process of trying to get yourself right and clean. Think about the victories. Think about those opportunities that God has brought into your life. And if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger. Doesn't look like I've lifted weights very many times in my life other than getting up from a chair. No pain, no gain. So what we're enduring, what we're surviving through is making us better. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on his promises for who you are. The second thing I want to remind you this morning is quit making permanent decisions based on your temporary circumstances. Why throw it all away because you've hit a rough spot? I don't know how many individuals that I've been able to counsel or came to those that are in leadership and said, you know, I almost gave up. Thank the God that you didn't make a permanent decision to walk away from God through the temporary problems that you were facing at the moment. Because those temporary things literally flee from you. Pull Psalms 23 and 4 up on the screens for me. We know that this is a psalm of David. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Though I walk through. There's temporary things that we endure for a season. There's temporary things that we must survive through. And there's some days, there's some days you just got to learn to rest upon God's promises. And for many, it's difficult. Just simply take your hand off. Let God lead and direct and guide. 
to the things that you're facing. There's some days in our lives that we've faced horrific things. The enemy has come against us and the reports have been bad and and diagnoses and and, uh, praise God. Have you ever been at your bank statement? And you think, how does this work? But faithfulness through who Christ is in your life, it comes to pass. And you move through it and you find that that if you stay on line and in line with God, if you stay on track with what his word says about you, that you have the confidence that God's going to bring you through because his word says, and it's written in red, I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you. Life is seasonal. Don't cut down what appears to be dead in the midst of your winter. Don't cut down what seems to be dead in the midst of your winter. Winter is necessary in order for the sap system to be restored so that when the demands of springtime are placed upon it, it will be ready. It'll flow. Some of us, some of you, I know I do. We don't always bear fruit because there's sometimes it's not fruit bearing season. I go through this within my own life that about every three years I go back and I reevaluate who I am because God's just really drawing me. Anybody else ever been there to where you're, you're, you're questioning not who God is, but who you are in God? How your relationship is. Make me better. Make me stronger. Let me be more of what you desire. Let me find myself finding your anointing to be freely flowing through me. And there's some days I've been the guilty one of damning it up myself. Because I start trying to make permanent decisions on temporary things. It doesn't take long for one limb of doubt to start to block the flow of the river. Another doubt comes along and it catches. And another doubt comes along and it catches. And the next thing you know, a mighty river now is trickling through an enormous pile of doubt that God is saying to you today remember your promises remember who God is and what his word says about who you are see we've allowed what is taking place in the world around us to determine how we feel about our destiny where we are going For everyone listening this morning, if it's online live or if it's on replay later, remember these few words. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't give you this opportunity to know who he is for him to slam the door upon who you are. See, as an earthly father, men that have children, you know that the love that we have for our children cannot be diminished. We still love our children with all that we are. There's times in our lives, and all the parents can agree with this, there's times in our lives that we don't necessarily like what our children are doing. Let's do that again. There's some times in our lives we just don't like what our children are doing. Amen. Amen. But it doesn't stop us from loving them. And our earthly father has given us an appointment to a destiny. Not just a destination, but a destiny of who he is upon this earth. Some of the decisions that we made... 
that was permanent decisions, we need to go back and fix some of them. We need to go back and make things right. Let us reverse some of our choices and turn our face towards God and find who God is in the midst of everything. See, the appointment in our destiny. God has a plan. I say it quite often. It was repeated last night on our Saturday night devotion by Pastor Luke. There's a divine purpose for you. There's a divine plan for who you are. So allow us to come together in the knowledge of who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is within our lives and follow the plan God has given us. Because there are times when circumstances will counterdict purpose. I'm going to repeat it. Write it down. There are times when circumstances will counterdict purpose, but the purpose of God will ultimately prevail. And I'm going to remind you, that's the reason why there's times in our lives that we simply survive. Because if it wasn't for the process, the process, for those that don't know, it's hard for me to hold this microphone and keep my brain on what I'm saying because I'm used to using my hands. And I... But the purpose of what God has for you will ultimately prevail in your life if, everybody say if, you stay pliable in his hand. If you stay pliable in his hand, because there's a destiny, and there's times in our lives, church, if I could just get you to grasp this, that God says that he has thoughts that he thinks towards us. Jeremiah 29 and 11, it's not coming on the screen. It says he wants to give us a hope, and he wants to give us a future. He doesn't want to destroy us. He wants to bless us. He wants us to be his children, that man after his own heart, that woman after his own heart. He desires that when we go through the rough stuff, when we go through those things that are tough on us, that we never lose grasp of his hand, that we never lose the sight of who he is as we travel along through this life. See, there's a destination for you and I. See, Adam and Eve had two sons. One was killed and the other was the one that killed him. But God's promise to Eve to be the mother of all living had failed at that moment. But do you realize the promise that was given hinged on the son named Seth. It's through Seth lineage that we find ourselves tracing all the way down to Noah. That traces from Noah all the way down to Christ himself. The promise of destiny was fulfilled. See, some of you in this house have seen certain things die. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. His promises are still yes and amen. His purpose for you has always been the purpose. He desires that you would draw close to him. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So how long will your journey be? How long will your journey be? And when are you going to return? This morning, in this house, there's some that's still seeking where they fit into God's plan. 
Maybe you're new here this morning, a guest. Maybe it's been a while since you've been here and you've come back. Maybe you just walked in today thinking, God, would you just speak to me one more time and tell me there's hope for who I am? Well, that's what God's doing. God's telling you there's hope for who you are. Not for who you are in this world, but who you are in Him. The destiny for you and I is found in the purpose of how God designed and what He desires us to be. It's just not a cliche for me. What God is going to do in this year of 21, we we went through a sifting last year. People being sifted, the enemy tried to sift Peter. Christ even said, he says, the enemy's coming to sift you. Prove yourself. Church, prove yourself in who you are in Christ. And this year of 21, if we will be doing what God's called us to do, will be the greatest year of ministry that we've ever seen. Not just as a church. Not by just a pastor or a pastoral staff or an elder or the leaders, but as individuals. The greatest ministry for who you are is in front of you. The greatest days of your life are in front of you. Someone come to the piano, please. Scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through much prayer and supplication. Let us find that we're spending time in the Word. Let us find that we're spending time in prayer. Let us look to what God has for us. Church, there's more than just simply making ends meet. God wants you to be glorious. God desires that you become prosperous. Not as the world sees prosperity. You know what I would love to see as as just a man? the scripture that my wife and I stand on for me and my house we will serve the Lord I want to see that prosperity come to pass because I stand upon it we've trained up our children we've trained up our grandchildren I want to see it come to pass we don't throw them away when they make mistakes how many is glad that God didn't throw you away (laughs) during the mistakes of your life I'm going to ask you to stay. The journey that you're on, for some may have to come back to where you begin. And today might be a new beginning for you, where you ask Christ to be the Lord of your life, the Savior who you are. See, the goal of the journey that we're on, all this coming and going that we find ourselves in, is to one day step in front of God and hear these words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, thy good and faithful pastor, that faithful Sunday school teacher, that children's church, the youth leaders. Not not well done, faithful worshipers, but just simply serving. And in the process of being faithful and finding, we should be anxious to hear God speak to us. 
So let us let us finish well. Let us move past what the world says and let us find what God says. Let us forget our past and move to our future. Let us not allow the things that have been said over us or to us have an effect in us. But God and God's word alone. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, today, we just simply ask, God, that you would have your way in our lives. God, this message, simple message, will have an effect on us. God, I pray that you draw the one in that feels that they don't need you. God, I pray that you open up the doors for those that want to run to you wholeheartedly, nothing held back. God, I pray that we fight the good fight. Lord, I pray that we finish the race. We find ourselves in the midst of the throne room lifting our hands and our hearts and our voices. And we sing unto you, holy, holy, holy. Now, God, just move upon your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you're here this morning, you want to come, you want to pray. There will be individuals, myself will be one that will stand here and pray with you. If not, go with God's blessings. Stay as warm as you possibly can. And know that God loves you on this Valentine's Day. Amen. God bless you all.